may just be coincidence, but in Assam, the frog marriage is not taken lightly. The monsoon that brings life to Terrapunji brings tragedy to the Indian state of Orissa. Over the last few years, monsoon floods have killed up to a thousand people a year and damaged millions of acres of crops. Today, the temperature is 28 degrees Celsius. The threat of rain is constant. To make matters worse, flooding hundreds of kilometers away caused engineers to open the sluice gates of a huge dam. And today, that water is flooding this valley. This is weather at its worst. Overnight, the river rose to 67 feet. It's danger mark, then 68, 69, 70 feet. Making matters even worse, the rain keeps falling. It goes from bad to worse. Rangaraju Balakrishnan, a state relief commissioner, has to get food and supplies to the flood victims. We are trying to mobilize uh, more kind of help from the outside, and uh, we need to mobilize the record number of uh, boats and uh, people to handle the situation. The Indian Air Force is also on the case. They organize airdrops to the more remote locations. It's no better in the low-lying regions of Bari. They're like islands in a rising lake. Thousands of lives are at risk and the clouds aren't lifting. The relief office in Jaipur rushes to the rescue. Workers dispatch boats and trucks loaded with rations. Men and materials move fast, but they may not be fast enough. Somehow, the rescue effort is a success. India hasn't always been so lucky. Extreme weather is nothing new here, especially in the state of Orissa. Last year, the land was scorched by drought. The year before, a super cyclone tore through the state with devastating results. Had enough of water? Here's a change. Not for the better, but it's a change. As India is deluged with rain, the desert just to the west is parched. I know, you're thinking, it's a desert, it's always parched. No, this desert is actually having a drought. In the Middle East, you'll barely see any little bits of moisture. What you might just see is a little bit of high clouds across this area. In fact, most of this area, from a year-to-year -year basis, is suffering from drought weather conditions. The dry weather conditions really don't help the situation. So Kabul, 33, Baghdad, 49, Tel Aviv coming at 33 degrees in Celsius. The cause, as usual, is the sun. It fuels a hot, dry wind from the arid Sahara in North Africa across the Mediterranean Sea. In Israel, they call this seasonal wind the Sharav, but they might as well call it the sponge because it soaks up all the moisture in its path. On the 27th of July, a water shortage of emergency proportions grips Israel. Here, on the Sea of Galilee, it's 30 degrees Celsius, hot and bone dry. More than half of Israel is desert. It's located in one of six desert belts. These are huge high-pressure systems that wrap around the globe at certain latitudes. The good news is they keep the area perpetually dry and sunny. The bad news is they keep it dry and sunny. They're kind of like guard dogs who take their job a little too seriously. They never let the rain-bearing, low-pressure systems come close. Unfortunately, they don't guard against the hot, dry winds that rob moisture from the soil, the animals and the plants. 
About the only thing that hasn't run dry in this region is hope. Professor Safariel manages the Institute for Desert Research in the Negev Desert. Our mission is to find those aspects or attributes of the desert that, as a matter of fact, not only are beneficial to humankind, but also have an advantage. They're making solar energy and vitamins and bacteria that make salmon fish pink. And I thought salmon were pink to start with. They found ways to turn the hot, harsh sun into cold, hard cash. This is a tribute to human ingenuity. There are typhoons in the Pacific, floods in India, drought in Israel. Blame it on the sun that drives the world weather bus. But I'm ready to get off someplace where it's just plain pleasant for a change. Unfortunately, we aren't there yet. Towards southern Africa, fairly dry along the western side. Some wet weather just exiting off that southeastern coastline of South Africa and windy as well. This used to be known as the Cape of Storms because of the windy weather and the stormy weather there. The 27th of July, Jeffreys Bay, South Africa, 10 degrees Celsius with an offshore morning wind. Every serious surfer on the planet knows this as J Bay, home of the perfect wave. Jeffreys Bay sits near the southern tip of the African continent, where ocean currents and strong winds collide. There's a cold gale howling off the coast of Antarctica and warm breezes drifting south from the Indian Ocean. As the wind and water meet, they create low-pressure systems, which produce swells that crash into the southern coast of Africa. What am I talking about? Swells? These are wicked waves. This place is infamous amongst sailors for its deadly storms, but famous amongst surfers for the ride of a lifetime. And the 27th of July is about the best time to surf J-Bay, so they tell me. The annual Billabong Pro Surfing Competition was held here two days ago, and surfers came from around the world. But Brad Bicknell is local. He's a professional surfer, currently ranked number two in South Africa. He knows what he's talking about. The winter months are, are the best months for it, you know, sort of from, from May down to August, September, um, when those big cold fronts are coming through. And, and people come from all around the world to come and surf this place. You know, they, they check the weather and um, they all descend upon this little coastal town around this time of the year. You know, it's a small little village, but um, when the waves turn on, you know, it's the best place in the world to be. Oh yeah, the best place. This bay has places named Boneyards, Impossibles, the Albatross. But for these people, the worse the better. That's how they like it. <laughs> when you're lying in your bed at night, you're just dreaming of surfing those waves and just dreaming of those big winds, those big southwesterlies. And you know, you hope to wake up the next morning to some started lines coming into the bay. So yeah, we dream about surfing in the weather all the time. A dream vacation spot. Mm, maybe for Brad. You want to hear the kind of weather I dream about? Sunny, sandy, seaside, and yes, after what we've seen, there is actually a place in the world where the sun is our friend. Here it is. Tenerife, the Canary Islands, just off Africa's west coast. The ocean currents that rage around the Cape of Good Hope become quieter to the north. On the 27th of July, it's 27 degrees Celsius with gorgeous blue skies, the height of tourist season. Now, these are people who know their weather. But you know what? This idyllic place has been infiltrated by, yes, a weather fanatic, an amateur meteorologist. His hobby is tracking Mother Nature's ill-conceived quest for balance. For him, this weather is boring, perfect, is boring to him. This patient woman is his wife. It was pretty difficult to persuade him that most normal people go on holiday in the summertime because Trevor was always keen to go on holiday in what he thought were the most boring times.